Pockets today is all about showing you the latest investments and how you can enhance your money. Now, this week globally, there have been a couple of things going on. The coronavirus pandemic, or rather it has been declared as a pandemic by the World Health Organization. Over and above that, we did see oil plunge by at least 30% on a one-day basis. Now, these two key events have caused a lot of volatility in global asset markets as well as local asset markets. Today, we are here speaking to the team at Scope Markets. They focus on alternative assets and give you access through their platforms to assets such as gold, oil and international stocks cutting across Europe and other, um, and other developed countries. Why are we here? We are here because scope markets, or at least the traders at scope markets, were able to make a positive return while the rest of the asset classes, especially equities on the Nairobi Securities Exchange, were on a downward trend. We want them to help us understand how could we have made money this week in as much as there was a lot of volatility in the markets? What should have been our trigger points? What asset classes should we have been focusing on? Join us as we'd have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the CEO of Scope Markets, that is Mr. Kevin Nganga. He'll be taking us through what the key trades were, where did he make the most money this week, and what does he see in coming days. Over and above that, he has opened up his offices to us to understand what does it mean to trade on their platform. I hope you can watch us, learn a thing or two, and maybe even enhance your trading platforms as well as your trading knowledge as we give you access to the latest insights. Welcome to Markets Today. I'm your host, Mbithe Mwema. It's been quite a volatile week locally and also globally for different asset classes. What are the key things that have happened? First and foremost, the World Health Organization did declare that coronavirus is a pandemic and that certainly uh, sent a spill in terms of the markets and the assets that we had been looking at over the week. The second important thing that happened was a clash between Saudi Arabia and Russia. We saw the worst oil plunge on Sunday through to Monday and oil was down 30%. Last time we saw this levels was in 1991. Global markets are now looking at like what they looked like during the 2007-2008 financial crisis. Has anybody made money out of this volatility and out of this mess? Well, this is a conversation we are discussing with Mr. Kevin Nganga, who is the CEO of Scope Markets. We want to understand were there alternative trades that him and his team actually engaged in to make money and what should we do next if we're looking to make a buck in the world of investments? Welcome to the show, Kevin. Thank you, Mbitha. How's the week been to you? Uh, it's been a roller coaster. Crazy, crazy. Um, I haven't seen this since 2008. Um, just from a context perspective, Dow Jones is on track for its worst weekly performance in its 124-year history. Wow. Um, we're just off 18% um, in the Dow. Down. We are seen unprecedented levels of volatility. Um, the whole week, Monday, we had circuit breakers um, across all markets. We, of course, saw what happened with Saudi, uh, and, and we are seen that coronavirus, unfortunately, we now have a first case in Kenya. Uh, so it was never a matter of weather. It was a matter of when. And now, in my view, is... What does that mean for the markets? I think two things. Um, anybody who was in the markets this week went for a significant emotional roller coaster. That's one. Two, I'm not sure strategies can tell you you stuck to your strategy. Okay. So I think this was a baptism, uh, especially for the new traders, to just understand what you'd call as black Swami, Swami events. Okay, all right. Um, yeah. Okay, so when you say emotions were driving, I know it's either yeah. we are running on fear or we are running on, on greed. greed. I'm sure yeah. for this one it was fear. But it's help us understand fear. the emotions and how do you separate them from the fundamentals, at least for this particular week? I think it's, up what you, it's primarily driven by market expectation and interpretation. You want to ask yourself, okay, how bad does coronavirus get? Exactly, how bad does it? How bad does it? Because Italy is on shutdown. Okay. Um, we're now starting to see all major sporting events globally getting cancelled. Uh, this morning, Formula One in Australia has been cancelled. Um, German Soccer League has been suspended. The NBA has been suspended. So now it becomes what you call a systemic impact on markets. 
systemic impact on access of services, systemic impact on delay. GE announced a four-month waiting period for production from China. From China. Oh. So that just tells you that global markets are going to slow down. Global trade is going to slow down. Travel, global travel, 26 countries, U.S. has banned access. Your largest trading partners, you're closing your, of your other. So okay. for me, I think it's just an issue of how much do you want to interpret and how long do you think it will take for you to control coronavirus? So are we at a point where we have enough information for the markets to stabilize at the lows the current are? Or do you actually expect a bit more pain in as far as looking at the coronavirus is concerned? I think I think outlook is there's a bit more pain. Okay. Um, I do expect to see more volatility, but as with every market, people look for buying opportunities. Okay. So what I see is an is enhanced volatility, and you would see prices go off maybe another ten percent and go up another eight okay. percent. What people need to focus on right now is protecting their accounts. What is, this, what, what is the way to risk manage your trades? And we are running seminars actually currently as we speak on helping investors understand in these volatile trading conditions, how do you protect your investment? Okay. What is a safe trade? How do you, how do you manage your leverage? leverage? How, how do you, you manage, manage your executions? All right, yeah. so how would you mitigate? Would that be just through hedging so, or how yeah, would you? Yeah, so a couple of things. One, um, what we call position sizing. You typically ask yourself, okay, if I have an investment of $1,000, what is my capital risk um, appreciation? Am I willing to risk only 1%? So you position, your size, you position size all your trades according to now how much are you willing to protect. It's not about the upside. It's about how to protect the downside. Very so that's important. one. Yes, that's, that's one. Two, it's about understanding the correlations on the markets. Traditionally, you'd have expected gold to go up because it's a safe haven. But gold is off from 1700 now you're down at about 1500 So what is the market interpretation? It is not a normal market. So you need to take a lot more time researching. Okay. You need to understand a lot more what is impacting the markets. And then ask yourself systemically, insurance companies, banks, commercial real estate, what are potential impacts at a macro level? Yes. Not only at as trade or asset class specific. Okay. If global demand for oil goes down, because airlines are not, going, are not getting any bookings. So who is going to buy this oil? What does that mean? This is some of the macro. I would highly recommend that people do a lot more research okay. on the macros. Okay. Yeah. So you brought out the element of gold also coming down. Maybe we can yeah. walk through the different asset classes that your platform provides. Office, and yeah. what was the performance in this week? Where did you make money actually? Let's so, okay. So um, the biggest upside uh, we've seen from, from our client portfolio has been from the indices. Um, there's been a lot of plays into shorting the U.S. indices. Um, so, so shorting this, selling. Yes, yeah, selling the indices. Okay. So we've seen the smart smart money look at uh, shorting the Dow Jones, shorting the S&P 500, and shorting the Nasdaq. Okay. Um, we've seen a bit of... Are all those three trades available on your platform? They are available on our okay. platform 24 hours a day, so five days a week. So if you had opened an account and you wanted to take advantage of the market sell-off, yes. you'd have been able to do that on our platform. Do I still have time to do that? Or is that opportunity? Yes, I think, I think um, there is still an opportunity, but I would encourage now for people to look at it from a risk management perspective. Okay. Um, if you're not very strong um, experienced, I would ask you to probably look at managing your position limits. Yes. Um, again, going back to my earlier point, looking at what is your capital risk reward ratio, okay. you probably want to increase the risk versus reward. Can I so, just talk to you? Yeah. These are all fantastic words, and you yes. know what you're doing. Yes. But if I'm on your platform, then how do I know what the right uh, positioning is and so, what the right move is? So, what we do is we have um, account managers, uh, what we call in retention, that will continue giving you information as what is happening in the market what you need to be careful about, what you need to look out for, what is the breaking news. Because now you have what you call multiple market touch points. So you have Australia rolling out an economic stimulus package. Yes. You had the Bank of England cutting interest rates by 50 basis point and offering a $39 billion 
stimulus package. So exactly. So now what's very important is you must be close to the markets. And what we do at Scope Markets is continuously update you. What are the breaking news? What is happening? Um, is there another further shutdown? What does that impact? Because remember, a number of the asset classes we offer are commodity currencies. Yes. Commodity currencies would mean if I can't export gold, if I can't export titanium, if I can't export... Then, then, then there's, really there's a problem with the fundamental share okay. of a uh, commodity exporter. Okay. So we would show you that because we offer you, of course, also... Um, global shares that you can look at. Yeah. All right. So we've yeah. gone. We've run through the indices. We've also run through gold. gold what was what, what was the uh, trade opportunity for oil this week? So of course, um, I looked. I was very interested in the in the reversal. Um, we woke up Monday morning to a thirty point, thirty percent drop in oil, uh, with no fundamentals. So. I definitely was looking at a smart trade of buying on the dips okay. because you'd obviously have to see some sort of recovery. But in classic trade balance, was this a dead cut bounce? Yes. I think so okay. because I do believe that Saudi is going to be very aggressive with their discounts they offer to their South, Southeast Asia clients because you have no demand, so you're competing for market share on a depressed exactly. size of the cake was this big now the cake is this small so it's all again coronavirus this is all coronavirus all these things come into play at one okay. so for me i think uh gold i think i'd look at buying on dips on oil uh, because and we can buy on your platform again. yes you okay. can trade you can trade both brands and uh, wti on oh, our platform yeah. Okay. Yeah. so you're saying for now what you're telling your clients is buy on the dip look at dips Look at opportunities to buy on the dips. Of course, we have to be very careful because um, our license doesn't allow us to give us investment advisory. So yes. what we try and do is tell you this is what this is, is happening. What's happening. These yeah, are the factual we... touch points. Then okay. you make decisions on your own. Ah, okay, yes. understanding. Yes. So I yes. think maybe for, if I'm on your platform, what is important is just to keep tabs on the updates. On the updates, we'll provide you a lot of information. What we can educate you on is okay. on how to manage your risk okay, so yes learn from it investment decision correct, and correct. execute on your platform that is correct. all right so the for for uh, for oil maybe my final question on that yes. um we have seen a bit of a recovery to 32 dollars yes. uh, per barrel we this actually went up as high as 36 yes yeah this came off came, came off, off again yeah. so do you think 30 35 36 is probably the new normal now i think I, I honestly think that there's a very strong resistance at 32, 31, because when you go below 30, you're going into uncharted territory. I'll explain. Number one, um, it is said that uh, Saudi's break-even is at about $8 a barrel to produce. Um, for Russia to balance its budget, uh, oil needs to be about 40, 45. But Russia has $150 billion dollar um, sovereign fund that they can use to sort of offset oil losses to try and m m manage the budget. So you're getting into uncharted territory for everyone. The U.S. oil, oil producers obviously will go into maintain, maintenance mode at this level because they break even at about 44, 45. Okay. Now, they've accessed cheap money to finance their, their oil operations. So the question is, who's going to, when you shake the tree, who's going to oh, come off? So how they can go can down. Go so it's just an issue of strategic reserves. Okay. Yeah. So I think there'll be a lot of fight at around the 30 level, but it is possible we could test law. Okay. Yeah. But we have seen that uh, an indication back on the oil that um, OPEC and Russia included could also meet earlier. The, the next meeting was supposed to be in June. Yes. There's indication that it could happen in May. It has to happen. It has to happen. So then do you think this market volatility we're seeing then comes to a standstill up until... Or it continues for the for the short term. It depends or... on their outlook on Corona. I think I think Corona is more of a... Corona is going to be really determinant as to whether some maybe Russia may take us may take a sort of back stand and say okay yeah maybe maybe not five hundred thousand barrels a day cut production cut maybe we start with three hundred thousand and see how that. Another, another, but it would require also commitment from other OPEC producers. Okay, as well. so it's just, it sounds like there's so many moving parts. Yes, there's a lot of fear fluid, in the market. Fluid, yes. We are not at the tail end of this. Could we be at no. the beginning of a. Personally, I think we are at the beginning. At the beginning. So more pain to come. I think there's more pain to come. I think people need to 
look at what their cash positions are. Yes. Even just as from a personal perspective, you want to look at what your cash position is and continuously look at, see, maybe you want to be a bit conservative now okay. so that you can live to find um, another day. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Kevin, we'll just take a short break. The sure. conversation is, is a lot of uh, things happening, a lot of moving parts. Cash is king, but we want to understand when we come back from the break. How does Kevin maintain his sanity and how does he remain objective in making his trades? We take a short break. We will be back in a few. Catch you then.